It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with chief investment officer, the man with the plan, best hair in financial services today, and my father. <laughs> Good morning, Bob Payne. Dad, how are you? What's shaking? Doing great, Rye. Uh, thanks for asking. And um, hey, I just enjoyed our little rivalry. Your New York Yankees are down here in Philadelphia playing my beloved Phillies. Bob, I may live in New York, but I would never leave my Philadelphia allegiances. So uh, please, please don't call me a Yankee fan. Even well, we got the rest of the office loves York. Yankees, so we got uh, we got uh, people rooting against me and you, and we're rooting against them. But hey, both teams are in second place, and hopefully they can take first by the end of the season. Hey, I like it. I like it. Well, we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. Bob and I are going to break down different types of accounts you can use to invest in and what their respective tax consequences are and some of the pros and cons of that. We're going to discuss the retirement pyramid. You need to build your retirement and income plan from the ground up. We're going to discuss the different levels to build your wealth plan. Along with this week's financial pornography, there's a lot out there you need to be careful about. Bob and I are going to bring light to some of the more devious schemes and articles out there on the internet. Along with this week's spotlight, we have our financial advisor on the show this morning, Frankie Lagrateria. She's got a case that she worked on, a real retirement plan. She's going to break down some of the mistakes that this couple is making so you can avoid some of those mistakes with your planning and investing. So, wow, let's hop to it. A lot to cover. So, Bob, we often discuss how money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make in the markets. So, let's discuss different types of accounts that you have available to invest in and what tax consequences they have and then how you should use them or not use them with your retirement planning. And the first ones I think about are your retirement accounts, right? A lot of times that can be your biggest asset. Uh, things like your 401k at work, IRAs. You know, why don't we talk a little bit about those and the tax consequences? Right. You're always asking us about what's the best way to get a return on my money? Where should I invest it? Should I buy equity? Should I buy bonds, tax-free bonds, municipal bonds, CDs? Well, the first thing is you've got to put money into an IRA or a tax-deferred account like a 401k or 403b because the tax advantages alone dwarfs any investment strategy that you come up with. I mean, you could have bought, you know, any one of the high tech stocks that, you know, high returning tech stocks, you're still better off putting money first into a tax deferred account because you're saving money on taxes up front. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just think about it from a common sense standpoint. If I have money in a savings account and it pays interest or pays dividends, or I have a capital gain, I have to pay taxes on that money every single year. And a tax deferred account, just like the title says, you defer paying the taxes on it so to way, way down the line in the future. And by growing your money tax deferred is a huge advantage. Well, that's what always cracks up about these politicians. You know, they always want to tax the wealthy. Well, in their opinion, if you have a job and you have income, you're wealthy. So it's real simple, <laughs> you know, for anyone to be in a 25% tax bracket. So if you even just put $1,000 into your 401k, it's $250. You know, or ten thousand dollars invested into a four hundred one k, twenty five hundred dollars that doesn't go to the IRS. It goes into your checking account, so you can go on vacation or you know spending or spend down your mortgage. But you know, I know you get benefits from the government if you if, if you pay money in taxes. But what are the chances that you're going to get all those benefits? that retirement versus having, you know, maybe a million dollars in your 401k. Yeah. But then there's a problem with that too. And we talk about this, your IRA, your 401k could grow to a million dollars, $2 million, and even more than that. But at some point you have to pay the piper. You have to take the money out and 70 and a half is that age. And as we call it, you're sitting on what we would call a ticking tax time bomb because eventually you're forced to take that money out and pay taxes on it, which could be a big problem when you get into your later years. Yeah, it used to drive me crazy, Rye. Back in the 70s, when I first started, I would have uh, investors say, well, Bob, I don't want to make that investment because I, if I make a lot of money, I'm going to have to pay tax. Well, you get to keep what's left. So I think it's worth taking the chance of making a return. But 
You know, I think the message should be is be certain that you talk to your children and your grandchildren about taking advantage of 401ks. And if you've done very well on your own, you know, gift them money to take advantage of this. Because if you're, you know, if you're 20 or 30 or just coming out of college, you're not thinking about saving. You're thinking about spending right, or paying down loans. So I think it's a great strategy to take advantage of tax deferral, but help your children and grandchildren do the same. Yeah. And I think on the other side of the coin is, okay, now you have all this money in these tax deferred accounts. The question is, what's the best way to take them out? Because one question we get often, Bob, is, okay, I'm looking to retire. I'm retired now. Where do I draw from my portfolio? What's the best way to do it? And typically, the best way to do it is take your cheapest money first. So money in a savings Mm -hmm. account, which you've already paid taxes on it, might be the best place. However, if you have a lot of money in those IRAs, 401ks, and maybe you're a little bit younger, maybe in your early 60s, it may make sense to start drawing on those now or do what we call Roth conversions, where you can convert that money to be completely tax-free. How's a Roth IRA work, Bob? Uh, Roth IRAs are the greatest invention since sliced bread. Greatest? That would be Wonder wow. Bread, too, by the way. I, like, I thought um, the internet was yeah. up there, too, but tell me about these Roth IRAs, Bob. Well, you get an opportunity to let your money grow tax-free. In other words, the government can't get their grubby little hands on your money. It compounds tax-free for the rest of your life. Nothing beats tax-free compounding. I couldn't agree with you more. And if you have an opportunity, let's say you're in a low tax bracket in any given year, it may make sense to start withdrawing from your tax deferred accounts like your 401ks and your IRAs and moving it into a tax-free account for life. The only thing I would add to that is talk to your accountant and your financial advisor first because taxes are a very, very important issue there. Well, one of your more brilliant strategies was to implement the backdoor Roth, right? Where if you have a 401k, you're actually able to make a contribution non-deductible to an IRA and then immediately convert it to a Roth. I can't believe how many of you don't even know about this and how few people take advantage of it. One of the greatest saving techniques that you can implement. Bob, I like the emphasis on brilliant there because I agree with you. The only (laughs) strategies I like to provide you are brilliant strategies. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need to optimize my retirement for taxes, money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review that analyzes everything. Just bring in your statements as they come in through the month, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We'll go through them. We'll build you a personalized portal so we can view everything in a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all those critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at diversification, what risks, what pitfalls you have in your portfolio, what tax strategies do you need to take advantage of. We're going to show you how to optimize taxes on your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden cost and investment portfolios that you don't know you're paying. Bob and I are going to break down all the costs in your portfolio and show you how to reduce fees so that there's more money going into your pocket. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. What is your income gap? You need to replace your income in retirement. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to tie it all together in one total financial master plan to determine that age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. And all you have to do to claim your strategy is make a call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. There's no strings attached. There's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. It's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. We're the pain of no pain, no gain, financial radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain market update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer and the Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. And equity markets remain stuck in neutral once again this week as trade war fears continue to rattle investors. 
You know, if Yankee Hall of Famer Yogi Berra were still alive and listening to my weekly market commentary, he would probably say it's deja vu all over again. The Trump administration raised the stakes this week, ordering trade officials to draw up a list of $200 billion worth of Chinese goods for additional tariffs, leaving the street in a quandary on how China would retaliate since they only imported $130 billion worth of goods from the U.S. last year. And if there's one thing markets hate, it's uncertainty. So until this issue is resolved, the markets will continue to be volatile. So take a deep breath and remember these three important things. First, volatility like we're experiencing right now is actually normal. Second, diversification is the only free lunch on Wall Street. For example, in a well-diversified portfolio, your small cap stocks are hitting all-time record highs, while at the same time, your non-U.S. stocks are going down or correcting as a result of the strong dollar. Which brings us to the third most important thing. Corrections are buying opportunities, not selling opportunities. The absolute worst thing you can do in a correction is sell because you're convinced it's going to go down further. Keep in mind, in the financial markets, all dips in history are temporary and the ups inevitable. As my buddy Joe, the dean of common sense, would tell you, smart investors buy low when the market goes on sale. So take advantage. So if you want to know what's on sale and where to take advantage in your portfolio, give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Let's see what people are saying about those other financial guys out there. I wish you could just shut your big yapper. Looks like you'd better stick with us. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we're common sense, simple men, so we like to keep it very simple for you as well. And that's why we put together our latest online video course, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive, just an easy baseline to get you started with the financial planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Get started with the retirement planning process. It's just a nice way to start getting the baseline together. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive simple, easy video course to download. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. That's the word bullish to 555-888. So Bob, when we talk about income and retirement planning and doing it right, in my mind, it really should look a lot like a pyramid made up of different levels and really making sure that it's built on the right foundation. So I thought it'd be a good idea to break down what those levels of the pyramid or retirement pyramid are and start with the base and making sure that you have the right base to start with. In your mind, you know, what does a base look like of the proverbial retirement pyramid? Well, Ry, we call this the A to B process and the very base of the pyramid are your essential needs in life. I mean, there are certain bills that have to be paid every month, whether you're working or whether you're retired. And you don't realize that it's real simple to figure these things out. Yeah. I mean, at a baseline level, we call it essentially really filling in your retirement income gap because we know very simply, when you stop working, you stop making income. And if you're going to live off your portfolio, you need to replace that income. And hence, you have your retirement gap. I mean, ask yourself right now, if I were to retire today, how much would I need to live on? I know most of you are thinking, I don't have a clue, but it's really not that hard to figure out. Right. Take a look at your income that you generated last year. Ask yourself this question. How much did you save? On average, right? How much do people save of their annual income? I mean, that varies. That varies a lot. And I, I would guess that most of you have no idea what that is. It could be half your income, like some of our clients that we work with. Maybe, you know, you're not saving enough. Zero. <laughs> so yep. it really runs the gamut, in my opinion, Bob. Yeah, and that's where you start. So, you know, once you know that you have a certain amount of income that you need to spend, then you start to look at your retirement or your current retirement and say, all right, how much passive income am I receiving? What's my social security benefit? Is there a cost of living adjustment? What's my pension benefit? If I have a pension benefit, is there perhaps an inheritance in my future? Are there any royalties or rents 
that I'm entitled to from some of my underlying assets. And that's where that income gap that you talk about every week comes in, isn't it right? You know, the difference between those passive income streams and your lack of earned income once you retire. Yeah, and then you have to, what I call, stack the cards against yourself because let's face it, we always say this on the show, but retirement is not a destination, it's a journey. And there's a lot of what we would call hidden costs that get incurred along the way. I believe you call it the insidious tax inflation, Bob, is just the cost of living over time is going to go up too. So now it's not only just about covering today's income needs, but over time, your cost of living is actually going to go up. Well, you know what, right? You're right. It's not just about you know meeting needs. I mean, it sounds so basic and, and uh, boring. You also have aspirational goals, right? There's certain things you want to do. Maybe you want to continue to contribute to charity, certain charities that you really are passionate about. You want to continue to make those contributions. You might want to, you know, endow at your university or continue to contribute to your university. And then, of course, there's that gift that keeps on taking, Rye, you know, children. Uh, you might, <laughs> you're <laughs> perhaps you mean, want to leave a legacy to your children. <laughs> you know what, Bob? I think that should be first on the base of the pyramid is how am I going to take care of my children? Then I'll worry about my basic needs. I, I kind of like that pyramid better. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. And that's really the way it works. It's uh, you know, the grant tour. <laughs> the parent is always working against the grantee, the child who wants you to invert that pyramid. But you've got to take <laughs> yeah. care of yourself first. Don't invert you know? the pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't let yeah. the money you want to leave to your children wag the investment dog. You got to make sure that your essential needs and wants and wishes are covered. Otherwise, you risk becoming a burden to your children, which is the last thing any parent wants. I agree with that too, Bob, as a, uh, as a son. But the other thing I think you want to think about there too, though, is, is this is where retirement planning can actually be a little bit of fun. And I, using the word fun and retirement plan don't tip go hand in hand. <laughs> but you know, once you figure out what those basic needs are, and this is what I love about doing these planning meetings, is the aspirational part. Because, you know, look, I mean, retirement is a great time. You can start budgeting it for trips and other things. You know, I met with a couple last week where they were really living bare bones. They've been retired for about two years now, and they were just trying to live off their current income, which was Social Security and a pension. But they had done a tremendous amount of savings. And I said, look, I mean, what if you could spend more than that? And the wife jumped right in and says, yes, I want to spend more. I want to have fun in retirement. So we said, let's go back and see what you can potentially spend you know, above and beyond what you're getting from your, your fixed income sources. And we figured even with adding in trips and all the things they wanted to do, not only would they be able to cover those, but they were still able to leave something left you know, for their heirs and for their kids later. It was the perfect plan, but they didn't realize they could do that because they've never been through the retirement planning process before. You know, right, there's that peace of mind. I mean, I, I did the same thing. I met with one of our oldest clients this week who just moved into a retirement community. We just updated her will and we met with the attorney and we're going through, you know, how to title all the assets. But then we also took the opportunity to redo the wealth projections, showing how these basic needs were met but also, you know, how much money she can give to her children for, for vacations and trips that they want to take. And, you know, we have it automated where we're just transferring, you know, money over to her checking account so that we keep a minimum balance of 30000 that she can spend on anything she wants at any time. And she said, Bob, you don't know how well I feel. You don't know how, how good this makes me feel knowing I never have to worry about writing a check or giving money to my grandkids or living my life. She goes, the peace of mind is priceless. That's the thing. It takes so much stress off in that first hurdle of just getting your baseline expenses down, which can be kind of daunting. But that's the nice thing about, again, the financial planning process is having a conversation, sitting down. We can just talk about it. We can start breaking down expenses. You'd be surprised how quickly in an hour meeting we can actually break down what your basic expenses are and aspirational expenses and, no pun intended, make it painless, given our last name is pain. You know, Rye, you know what's great about that? It's as simple as getting from point A to point B. You tell us the B, you show us the A, we'll show you the way. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, I'd love to have my own A to B investment process, well, why wouldn't you? Then if you're one of the next few callers and you saved at least 200000 for your retirement, my son and I will create for you your own A to B investment process. Now, it's not just the process of investing. It's a total financial master plan. We're going to look at everything that's important to you financially. We're going to have our CPA partner review your tax return. You know, why pay any unnecessary taxes, right? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Don't give them any of yours. 
let's look at your wills. 42% of you don't even have a will. Let's get started. You know, let's get on that path to having an estate plan that's not an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. And lastly, put all those investment statements. We just finished you know, the month of June. Over the next week or two, you're going to have all your June statements. You're going to have the second quarter reports from your portfolios. You know, I know it's a lot of work to put this together. Just grab a shopping bag, stick them in, pick up the phone, text us for an appointment. We're going to break down your entire portfolio and compare apples to apples. We're going to show you an investment analysis spreadsheet that analyzes your portfolio to the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You know, to have a truly diversified portfolio is the only free lunch on Wall Street. We're going to look at your fees. Most of you are overcharging yourself by not understanding the hidden cost embedded in your portfolio. And lastly, let's make sure we can fill that income gap. Whether you're in retirement and make sure that retirement income is going to grow net of inflation or whether you're preparing for those golden years. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, answering that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, be one of the next 10 callers at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get that second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call or text today for a complimentary review. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what egregious data content did you find out there this week in the world of financial pornography? We had a major prediction rise from one of the big money center banks, investment strategist, who's predicting an imminent 5% drop in the stock market. And he believes drop. that you should take precautions in your portfolio you know, to avoid this big, awesome, scary 5% <laughs> correction. I now, mean, let's- Don't get me wrong. <laughs> if your portfolio can't absorb a 5% correction, that portfolio is not designed correctly. Would you agree? <laughs> Yeah, and if you're worried about a five percent correction or you know downturn in the market, you shouldn't be in the market. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's, exactly. That's, that's, that's really a normal what week in the market. Financial pornography segment is all about. It's about how not to invest. You know, they they scream at you from the headlines to you know motivate you to read the article, but it's not to help you to become a successful investor. It's to keep you out of your investments. They don't speak truths. What they do is they just uh, instill fear and nervousness in part of the investor, and it's the worst thing you want to yeah. have in your mind when you're trying to deploy your assets. Oh, and I see this very often. A lot of times you'll see a retired person, is you know, someone who's just retired, and they're looking at their portfolio every day. They were working before, and they get obsessive about, and you know, you may 
relate to this, obsessive about what's happening in every move. We had a client recently just retired, just wanted to panic out of the market in the last couple of weeks. And it's like, whoa, whoa, time out here. You know, investing is a long term discipline. It's not about what's happening on a daily, weekly basis. If your strategy is contingent upon what's happening in the news today and making those short term kind of decisions, you know, the, the problem is that's probably going to hurt your retirement performance long term. When you take the short term view, it's always detrimental to the long term. And let's face it, retirement is about the long game, not the short game. And it just speaks, you know, volumes, right, to the fact that the most successful investment strategy is about one that fits you, that's customized to you, because, you know, the market doesn't care. It doesn't owe you high returns just because you need them, right? You have to accept the returns that the market gives, but you also have to understand that the market is not about a high IQ or, you know, a well educated person. It's about behavior and temperament. Yeah. And if you're using your behavior and temperament to make decisions, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> so I think that's something to remind yourself of. Because if you are invested in the market for a portion of your portfolio, which you should be, even if you're retired, your mindset needs to be long term. You know, you can't be thinking you're not going to make money in the market because you're in and out. You're going to make money in the market because you're able to sit in the market for a long period of time and that's when you're rewarded. And that's the hard part, but that's where discipline and a strategy come into play. Well, here's what proper diversification always means. There's something in your portfolio that you are just in love with right now because it's making you a boatload of money, but there's also part of your portfolio that you're really mad at. And if you're properly diversified, you can't have everything doing well at the same time, because if that's happening, you're in big trouble. Yeah. And that's actually, sounds counterintuitive, but if everything is working in your portfolio, that's probably a red flag because that means when things go down, it's all going to go down at the same time because you have a lot of like investments and that's actually not a good thing because what goes up goes down. So by having, to your point, Bob, different types of things in your portfolio that work at different times that is a much safer place to be. So yeah, you need something in your portfolio to hate. <laughs> you know, Rob, you. just this week you were on CNBC and they had a couple of analysts on with you who are all talking about buying small cap stocks. They're all time record highs. We've owned them for 10 years. You're the only voice of, of reason saying, no, you got to buy what's low, not buy what's high. I mean, even the experts on Wall Street on the CNBC every week are telling you to buy high. They never tell you to buy low. Thank God I was on there, Bob, to set them straight. <laughs> <laughs> So I found another article out there this week, and it, it just seems like these brokers every week now are having problems that you need to know about. This is an article in the Wall Street Journal talking about firms with troubled brokers are often behind sales of what we call private stakes. So there's you these talk small- about the people that you go up on broker check under FINRA and they've got uh, a dozen complaints against them from um, investors. Yeah, there's a lot of these smaller brokerage firms out there that you may not have heard of before. They have an unusually high number of brokers working for them that have a very checkered past. And you can actually go online and see what regulatory infractions they have against them. And in this case, apparently, a lot of these firms have brokers with high, high infractions against their record, which is, that's a red flag. Yeah, well, you know, it always amazes me, Ry, why people don't love Wall Street no one ever gets fired. Yeah, that's right. You just reinvent yourself at the next firm. But what's a little bit more alarming right now is these small brokerage firms with these brokers that have a checkered past are selling billions of dollars of what we call these private stakes or private equity. And a lot of times they're targeting senior citizens. And you know, just to give you a little background, a private placement type of investment is one that has stakes in anything from apartment complexes to oil wells to biotech companies. And a lot of times there's high commissions, Bob, on these things, and they're not very good investments. I'm shocked, right? So you have high cost, illiquid investments that are being sold by people with a, uh, a horrible past. Yeah. So I think the rule of thumb here and how to protect yourself is number one, whenever you're pitched anything that's private, right? The word private right off the bat should be a red flag because that typically means it's more illiquid, meaning it's very hard to, to trade it. And if it's hard to trade, that means it's very hard to get out of. So even though these advisors or these brokers have been accused of fraud and sale practice abuses, they say, well, I'll be better this time. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's a wonderful industry. And, and the way, Bob, to protect yourself is you can go up on FINRA.org, I believe it is, and any broker you're working with or who's pitching you a product, you can look up their past. If they have a lot of infractions against them, which is public knowledge, you don't want to walk away from that deal. You want to run away from that deal, especially if they're trying to sell you something that's quote unquote a private equity deal. At the very least, get a second opinion just from somebody who's a fiduciary who actually has to put your interest first. I mean, the government just let this Department of Labor rule you know, go by the wayside, and all of a sudden, these brokers are going back to their old practices. At first, they said, hey, I'm going to act in your best interest, and then the government said, no, you don't have to. Oh, okay, never mind. Let me charge as much commission as I can because it's about making money for me and my company, not for you, the yes. investor, which is so wrong. That's right. So if you're worried that your broker advisor is concerned about the yield to broker and not your best interest, here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you have everything set up correctly. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you a holistic full review, our famous total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. Simply bring in your statements if they come in this month, just put them in a folder, throw them in there. We'll go through all of your financial assets. We'll build you your own personalized portal and we'll review everything on a bird's eye view and we'll look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. Do you have any of these private stakes in your portfolio with high commissions? We're going to show you where all the hidden costs in your portfolio are and show you where you can reduce cost. We're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio protected? If the market pulls back or goes down tomorrow, what risks do you have in your portfolio? We're going to point them out to you. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. You need to fill that income gap. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that very, very important question. Are you going to outlive your money? or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now, our family has been perfecting for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Hey, don't miss out. we got a few openings left. Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments, and I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. There's really only one way to keep me off your mind, and that's by coming in for a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. They'll ease your fears about market volatility with their signature Total Financial Master Plan. They'll even help you get financially organized with their 360 Financial Portal. It's a great way to get all your statements in one place. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, I'll send you scrambling through your file cabinet hoping you're well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Schedule your visit with Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain. Now, back to the show. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we like to keep it simple for you because we're simple men and common sense advice is the right type of advice to make sure that you're on your path to financial freedom. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's just a baseline to get the retirement planning process started and you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. 
That's the word bullish to 555-888. Get the planning process started. It's a simple three-part series, what you need to know about creating an income. You cannot outlive. You can download it for free. That's 555-888. Text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Simply go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. You can even subscribe to the show right there on the website. And yes, Bob's hair is real. Check it out for yourself. And you can catch me most weeks on CNBC Squawk Box, Fox Business News. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. And if it's a great question, Bob and I will answer it right on the show. And to help us with our email questions today, we have our producer, the man behind the scenes, Mark Haywood, running the controls. How are you today, Mark? Good morning, gentlemen. I am T minus one month from getting married, so I'm just trying Oof. to hang on and enjoy the ride. Pressure's on, brother. How's it going? Are you feeling the stress or what's uh, how you feeling? Well, I'll put it this way. If anyone in the New York, Philadelphia region needs a good wedding planner, I've gotten really good at it in the last year. <laughs> so you're going to put a shingle out to be a wedding planner. Now. That's right. If anybody wants a nice Southern style wedding, I can hook you up out there. <laughs> We'll give your information out after the show. That's right. You guys do financial <laughs> advising and wedding planning. It's perfect. <laughs> it's a perfect Just combination. Make sure you show up on time, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be late to my own wedding, Bob. <laughs> oh, me. Well, let's dive into the mailbag today. we got some great questions that have come in from the listeners out there. This one is from Howard in Lloyd's Neck, Long Island. Bob, some people in the media say that I should invest primarily in mutual funds, and they say I can expect annual returns north of 10%. I don't even need a return that big at my age, but I'm intrigued by the idea of it. Where do I find these funds? Well, Howard, that's a great question, and you can find these funds in the dreams of the people telling you that because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what they were really what they really meant was that they're going to charge you at least 1, maybe 2% a year to manage your money in a mutual fund. And over 10 years, that's 10% to them. What they forgot to tell you was <laughs> that's not 10% to you. You know, Rye, this is old school investing. You know, mutual funds have been bleeding assets simply because net of these exorbitant internal fees, they've underperformed the market for the last 100 years. So what you're telling me, Bob, is I don't want to invest in a mutual fund because the fees are higher and the performance has been less than the market. 80 to 90% of the time, what am I missing? Isn't that a good deal? <laughs> it's a good deal if you're managing money for a living and uh, you have people out there selling your fund. It's just that you know, it was a great vehicle to use to invest in the stock market, get people, you know, retail investors like you and I into the market, but now there are much cheaper options that give you exposure to the market. And thank you to Professor Fama and French at the University of Chicago. They have documented and actually won the Nobel Prize for proving that a mutual fund manager, net of fees, simply can't outperform the underlying market. So you know what I say, Rye? Skip Tell me, Bob. the fees and go right to the market. That's right. And the new school way of doing that are exchange-traded funds, or you've probably heard the term ETF. So if you're looking at your portfolio and you have mutual funds, maybe you should start to review it and consider using the lower cost option, exchange-traded fund for the most part that, again, gives you access to the market without a money manager who has typically underperformed the market for decades upon decades. You know, in all fairness to Howard, you know, over the last hundred years, the stock market has averaged about a 10% total return. But, you know, there's never one year where it returns 10. You know, one year could be 25, one year could be a negative five, but rarely, if ever, do you have a 10% return. It doesn't go up on a straight line. So it really comes be down easy. to investment behavior staying invested, staying diversified to achieve those wonderful equity returns that are available from the market and the market so generously gives, but you've got to be an investor, not a trader. Well, Howard, keep on chasing the dream. And of course, I can say that <laughs> because we know there are other ways to get to Howard's investing goals. Let's move on now to Martha. Martha is in Radnor, Pennsylvania. Martha says, Ryan, my aunt died recently and left her house and some cash to me. I've never had a desire to buy rental property before, but I'm considering keeping the house as a rental property now that this opportunity has just fallen into my lap. 
Is that wise, or would I be better off to sell it and invest the proceeds? I guess it just depends, Martha, on what headaches do you want. I think real estate can be a great place to invest. In fact, I have a lot of clients and friends that made a lot of money in real estate. But you know, we use the term sweat equity when it comes to real estate because you got to work at it. It's not a passive type of investment. You know, Rog, I was just in Sicily with your Uncle Al. We went back to the home he was born in. And that home actually is 700 years old. It's still in great shape. How come they don't build them like that here? <laughs> That's the problem, Bob. Things break down because the homes here are not made like they were in Italy back in the day. And that's the thing. It's kind of like I always say this, but if you have a bond portfolio that's producing a lot of current income for you, it's never going to call you in the middle of the night to say, hey, my air conditioner is broken. It needs to be fixed. Oh, hey, the roof's starting to leak. And that's where the sweat equity comes into owning real estate. We forget about all the headaches and carrying costs that come with it. Sure. You got landscaping. Who's got to cut the grass? You know, Who's going to paint the uh, outside, the interior, the in- exterior, the interior? Things wear out. Gosh, I had three floods in my home right before I sold it. It was a disaster. And then on top of that, what do you think is going to happen with these local municipalities who made all these pension promises? You think they're going to raise real estate taxes or reduce them over time? <laughs> well, I know if you live in New Jersey, you're not holding your breath for lower real estate taxes anytime soon. So yeah, so I think it just comes down to a lifestyle decision. You know, we see this a lot now. If you're getting close to retirement, in retirement, we're seeing a lot of you actually divest your real estate just because you've had the headaches of owning real estate for for many, many years and it's no walk in the park. Even though it seems glamorous, I'm gonna collect a passive income, it's not really a passive income and that's what you need to weigh out. But you know, Ryan, I want to ask you a question. Ask Howard and Martha, Bob. on a scale of one to ten, how financially organized did they sound to you? I think they sound like all of us. We're probably a three if we're lucky. We're not that organized. We don't know where everything is. And ask yourself, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized would you like to be? And of course, if you'd like to be a 10, all you have to do is be one of our next few callers who have saved at least 200000 for your retirement. My son and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal, which will allow you to see all of your net worth in real time anytime you feel like looking at it. More importantly, it'll track how you're progressing towards your goals of retirement, education, your estate plan. It'll keep you on track in real time when you feel like looking at it, not when somebody picks up the call and makes you make an appointment. See, if you're one of the next few callers, what we're going to do for you is we're going to review your total financial master plan. We're going to look at your taxes to make sure you're not paying any unnecessary income taxes. We want to look at your wills and your trust and your beneficiary forms. 42% of us don't even have a will. Let's make sure your estate plan is not an IOU to the Internal Revenue Service. And lastly, we just finished the month of June. Your July statements are coming in. Your quarterly statements are coming in. Let's put it all together into one investment analysis spreadsheet, which will answer all the questions you have about your portfolio. You want to be certain that you have the three key elements of a successful strategy diversification, low cost, and high income. The only free lunch on Wall Street is diversification. Are you truly diversified? Are you being hurt by hidden costs? Are you being overcharged by your own portfolio? I hope not. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into one customized plan just for you and your family. And we're going to answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for four decades? Yes, that's correct. For 43 years, we've been helping families like you get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with the highest odds of success and as much certainty as a fiduciary firm like Payne Capital Management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text now at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Nine two. We still have a couple slots left. If you have over two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement, here's your shot for a holistic review at eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's call or text eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track at eight four four seven five two six six nine two. That's call or text eight four four. 752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio.
Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844-752-6692. That's text the word CASH, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I like to give you common sense, advice you can use, simple planning techniques, that can help you get on the path to financial freedom. And that's why we put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About an Income You Cannot Outlive, just a great way to get the financial planning process started. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888, the word bullish, to 555-888. You can get the full video series Again, they're a simple video course, just get you started. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. Get started today. You can simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. And now, we have a very, very special guest on the show, Bob and I's colleague, our star financial advisor, Frankie Lagrateria. And as always, we want to be one of Frankie's financial friends. It's everyone's dream. So what's happening? What's happening, Frank? Hello. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Now that you're on the show, it's like everything is right with the world, Frankie. Everything's a little (laughs) bit better when I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you... uh... (laughs) I noticed that too. (laughs) Um, And this is our spotlight segment. And each week, what we like to do is take a real financial plan and uncover some of the flaws, or what we call pain points, just like our last name, pain, P-A-Y-N-E, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing, and you worked on a case this past week for a couple. Why don't you give us the breakdown, give us the details, and how you helped this couple essentially get to their path to financial freedom? Yeah, absolutely. So I worked with a couple that was a little bit more interesting in the sense that they didn't do things in a very uh, normal way they do their finances separately. So usually we work with the case and it's the whole household, but you know, they, they decided, you know, I have my money, you have your money, you know, we live together, we do our expenses together, but our assets are separate. Hmm. Which it, that happens. It happens. Sure. Yeah. And the big thing here was that is perfectly fine as long as you have a plan. And that was the big thing here was you have your plan, I have my plan, but yeah, we have a little bit of an overlap, and uh, there was a few moving pieces that weren't going so cohesively. So, you know, Frankie, I always have, uh, I've had some clients like this in the past where one of the spouses says, well, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is ours. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, but that is a tricky way to do planning, because typically, you know, we like to have both spouses together and Mm -hmm. try to make it a, a concerted effort. So, You know, what did you do to essentially make the plan work? Yeah, so first, I think we just had to lay out the fact that we needed a plan. I mean, even though you have your money, he has her money, sure, she has this, this is that. You know, we have all these different buckets. It doesn't mean that we can't have one cohesive plan. You know, we can have titling specific. Just a little background. Uh, Are they both still working? Still working. Both want to retire in the next five years. Okay. Okay. And how do they handle their current bills? Uh, do they share in that expense or does one pay more than the other? Yeah. So they try to do their expenses a little bit more 50-50. So they do, you know, they split their mortgage. They do things like with their expenses together. Right. Um, it just really came down to, you know, what I saved before the marriage and things like that is going to be separate. Now, how about investment strategy? Do they, do they, are they a like mind in, in terms of risk and portfolio strategy? 
And that's where the difference came in a little bit heavier. And you could see that, you know, where the husband was, you know, he may be working a little bit longer than five years. So he's like, no, I could be more conservative. And, you know, the wife was more, you know what, let's be, let's bring him back down. Like, I do want to retire in five years and I want to note that I have a nest egg. So she wants to be more conservative. He wants to be more aggressive. Yes. If I understand correctly. Cool. So did they realize that they had more risk than they needed? They did and they didn't. They realized one part that they knew they had a lot in the market. They had a lot in equities. But on their other side, we were looking at it and I said, all right, well, you have you know 40% that's supposed to be your safety and you have it either majority in cash, which we talked it's about nothing. last week. Yeah, getting you nothing. Or in these risky bond funds. Oh, we don't like bond funds, do we, Frankie? No, we don't. And I came so up hard with a fun little with bond funds Because you don't, you don't have a clue to what the return's going to be. Even the income, the income can change on a monthly basis on a bond fund. You have no way to do proper planning with an investment that's open-ended. You might as well be in the stock market. So are you saying, Bob, that your bond fund has high risk and little reward? Like riding a I'm roller coaster without a safety like belt? equity like risk than it does bond risk. And it's uh, the whole purpose of a bond is to hedge your equity risk. So you want to have a bond with what I call permanence and definition. Simply state it. You want a fixed rate of return and a fixed date where they're going to give you back your money. Yeah, and a bond fund just doesn't do that. Mm-mm. No, absolutely not. And so, about Frank, yeah, but Frank, all of Frankie's friends like to get their money back. Is that is that a? Uh, <laughs> a, a they good like statement? that. They do prefer it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, return of the money is a good strategy. Yes, it Especially is. Especially in their safety side. I mean, yeah. you're, you want to take risk. Let's take risk and decide that you can have this. Yeah. You know reward you can have a uh, unlimited amounts of reward why take risk in the side that you're really not going to get much out of it yeah that's why you're the dean of common sense frankie <laughs> i've never been called that but i love it <laughs> <laughs> new nickname a new nickname a new yeah. nickname each show <laughs> well what i like here too is i'm looking at the actual uh, proposed portfolio put together and we talk about this on the show all the time about filling that income gap and i noticed here in this portfolio you're able to increase the income on the portfolio by over $30,000 a year, bringing them almost 50000 a year in current income that has nothing to do with the market going up or down, just a reliable income stream that ideally should compound and increase over time. Oh, yeah. And if you take that compounding you know, and you increase it over 20 years, that's an extra million dollars, over a million dollars. Yeah, and that's the kind of certainty you need in retirement. You know, being reliant on the market going up and down is just not a strategy, right? That's a that's a strategy that's bound to fail because we know markets they're going to be very volatile over the course of all of our lifetimes. Oh, I know, and yeah, it only comes down to two that. things: you know, it's about <laughs> investing and getting total return. You know that uh, these market timers they always talk about all or none, but when you have a diversified portfolio, you make money every single day. Your bonds accrue interest; it's your money your stocks accrue dividends that you get paid every quarter. And whether the market goes up or down in a well-diversified portfolio, you're going to get paid every year. You're going to make a return. And that's the one thing that's missed in all these financial pornography channels that are out there spewing market timing as a strategy. Oh, absolutely. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a plan like this, I need a plan, period. I need to make sure that I fill in my income gap. Here's a shot to do it. We only have a couple slots left, but if you give us a call right now, will run free if you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob, myself, and Frankie will run for you our total financial master plan. And we're going to do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review just like this. You just need to bring your statements in, put them in a brown paper bag, a folder. We'll go through everything. We'll build you a personalized portal. And we're going to run the same analysis. You know, what kind of income does your portfolio generate? We're able to increase the income in this portfolio up to $50,000 a year filling in this couple's income gap. What unnecessary risk do you have in the portfolio? Are you too reliant on the stock market? As you get closer and into retirement, you need to be less reliant on the stock market. And we're going to look at fees. What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio? Do you have things like annuities, brokerage products? We're going to show you how to reduce that cost. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, we have a few spots left and you have saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team of 
Ryan, Frankie, and I will create for you your own total financial masterpiece. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost, there's no plan, unless you call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Well, another fantastic show with a fantastic financial friend, yes. Frankie. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> and what was the other one? The Dean of what? Common sense. Yeah, common sense. Common sense. <laughs> and I was, uh, was I the Duchess of Pain Capital a few weeks ago? I didn't hear that one, but I guess <laughs> that was you. <laughs> Can't wait till next week, Frankie. <laughs> Can't wait till next week. <laughs> well, another great show. Thanks for being on the show, Frankie. Thank you for having me. Big Bob, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, getting all my shopping done so we can have a great celebration this Fourth of July. I like it. I like it. Well, have a great weekend, and as always. Be Bush. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.